Hello, hello everyone, Dr. Jason Silva here, and today we're going to talk about designing research. Now before we get into that, we need to think about the four purposes of research. This includes exploration, explaining, description, and application. First, with exploration, we need to consider exploring a research problem. So for example, with the recent opioid epidemic, criminal justice scholars might be interested in understanding drug abuse in the United States. We could consider how many people are addicted to drugs, how many people use drugs, what types of drugs they specifically use, how many people are dealing drugs, how much money is made from dealing those drugs. These are all research questions that help us explore a general research problem. Second, explaining refers to two variables working together or one variable explaining the reason for another variable. This would include the dependent as well as the independent variable. The dependent variable depends on the independent variable, and thus we are exploring the dependent variable being impacted by the independent variable. So going back to our example, we could consider what motivates people to become involved in the opioid epidemic. This could include mental health issues, depression, past traumatic experiences. All of these are independent variables potentially impacting our dependent variable, opioid addiction. Third, description helps us understand the scope of the problem at large. So for example, how many drug users are there in the United States would be a descriptive understanding of the problem. Fourth, we could consider the application to examine a specific policy or program within the United States. So for example, when we think about rehabilitation centers, as well as safe injection sites, as well as clean needle programs, all of these are policies that have been implemented and afterwards need to be examined to determine if they are effective in perhaps reducing the amount of opioid addiction in the United States. Now, some of these might sound a little similar, and it's important to consider that within your own research projects, many times these will not be mutually exclusive. You may have overlapping purposes within your research proposal. So now that we understand the general purpose of doing our research, it's important to consider the different aspects of a research design. And this goes back to our understanding of the scientific method. The six components of the scientific method include asking a research question, doing background research, constructing a hypothesis, testing your hypothesis by doing an experiment, analyzing your data and drawing a conclusion, and reporting your results. So let's go a little further into what the six of those components entail. First, when designing a research question, it's important to consider your interest in the topic, a theory potentially surrounding your research question, and or a policy or program that you would like to examine. This goes back to our application purpose of research. The second component of the scientific method includes doing background research. This is when you'll use platforms like Google Scholar, LexisNexis, ProQuest. All of these will help you identify other empirical evidence and academic articles surrounding your topic of inquiry. From there, you can develop an annotated bibliography, ultimately turning this into a literature review both of which are used to describe previous research examining your topic and the gap in the literature that you are looking to fill with your particular experiment. If you are not looking to fill a gap and instead you are looking to verify someone else's research, that's referred to as ensuring the validity of the general research design and the conclusions from previous results. The third component of the scientific method is constructing a hypothesis. What do you believe the results of your experiments are going to be based on previous research examining the problem, as well as a general theoretical understanding of the issue at hand? The fourth component of the scientific method is conducting your actual research. This is where data collection comes into play and goes back to our assessment of quantitative versus a qualitative approach to examining a research problem. Once we've developed an understanding of the distinction between qualitative and quantitative research, and decided which approach we would like to take, we now need to consider how we're going to operationalize and conceptualize the variables being examined. Conceptualization refers to specifying the meaning of the concepts and the variables being studied. Operationalization refers to how you will actually measure the variables being studied, i.e. the steps taken. In addition, the sample refers to who it is you will actually be studying. 
So for example, going back to our opioid addiction crisis, we could consider, are we examining drug users? Are we examining drug dealers? These would be completely different samples depending on the original research question. The fifth component refers to data analysis. This will answer our research question, as well as whether or not to reject our hypothesis or fail to reject our hypothesis. It's important to note that we never say accept the hypothesis. Instead, we say fail to reject the hypothesis. The sixth component of the scientific method refers to our conclusion. This is summarizing our results, connecting with the impact that our results will have on a grander scale. So for example, if we determine that our policy or program to address the opioid crisis was effective, what type of impact would this have on a larger scale? The implication of results play an important part in developing future scholarship as well as policy and program implementation. Thank you for watching this video, and please feel free to comment below if you have any questions about research design.